continue reading the Holy Gospel with explanation by Blessed Philoct, chapter 9, verses 30 through 33. Reading explanation. Glory to Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You just reject the one who healed me, he says, because you know not from whence he is. But the very fact that he is not among those you deem illustrious makes it even more remarkable than he can do such things. Clearly, he has some greater power and needs no help from men. Then the blind man answers those who had said earlier, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Turning their own words against them, we all know, he says, that God hears not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will, him he heareth. Know that he not only declares the Lord to be free of sin, but indicates that he is highly pleasing to God, and that all that he does is of God by saying, If any man be a worshiper of God and doeth he will, him he heareth, knowing well that the Pharisees were intent on covering up the miracles. The miracle, the blind man with full understanding proclaims the beneficent deed. If he were not of God, he could not have worked such a miracle, unlikely any other since the world began. Others had opened the eyes of those who had lost their sight because of disease, but never someone blind from birth. What occurred here is without precedent. Clearly, the worker of this miracle has greater power than any man. Some blind cold and formal logic have expressed his doubt. How can a blind man say that God hears not sinners? As the lover of men, God most certainly hears those who pray that their sins be forgiven. It is unnecessary to respond to this, except to point out that the words God hears not sinners mean that God does not grant sinners the power to work miracles. For the Spirit of God does not dwell in a body that is subject unto sin, but God does hear the prayers of those who with heartfelt repentance ask forgiveness of their sins. He hears them as penitents, not as sinners. As soon as they ask forgiveness, they move from rank of sinners to that of penitents. It is therefore certainly true that God hears not sinners, neither does he give to sinners the grace to work miracles. When in repentant sinners ask him for his this power, they are grasping for something that does not belong to them. How could God hit those from he those how could God hit those whom he rejects? Consider how the blind man said, If any man be a worshipper of God, then added, And doeth he will. And doeth his will. Many are God fearing, but fail to do the will of God. One must fear God and do his will. Both faith and works are necessary, or as Paul says, faith and good conscience, or to express it in the most exalted terms divine vision and active virtue. Faith truly comes alive only when accompanied by God within deeds. This foster a good conscience, just as with deeds and evil conscience. Likewise, works are enlived, enlivened by faith. Apart from one another, both are dead. As it is written in another place, Faith without works is dead, and so are works without faith. Behold how truth bestows on a beggar, unused to public debate, the power of con to confess Christ boldly, and to rebuke the height and mighty among the Jews. Great is the power of truth, so restricted and feeble is falsehood. Glory to Father, Son, Holy Spirit.